Christopher Columbus is a historical figure whose life is defined mainly by words such as courage, strength of character, and the like. Yes, he had the courage to sail where few have dared to go, but that fact cannot erase the cruelty and greed of the navigator from history. The official history of Columbus' expedition is full of half-truths and censored accounts of it. But there are some lesser-known things that show the inhuman and often overlooked side of this famous explorer. Of course, Columbus was an extremely experienced and courageous sailor, but the mission he began in 1492 had no humanitarian purpose at all. With the blessing of Queen Isabella I of Castile, Columbus began a voyage of wealth. A contract signed with the Spanish royal family mentioned that Columbus would become viceroy of any new territories he discovered. In addition, the explorer would receive 10% of the income from all the precious metals found. But no one could have imagined that Christopher Columbus would commit unimaginable acts of atrocity against the natives for the sake of enrichment, that he would use them as completely disenfranchised slaves. In other words, Columbus was a cruel man, even by the standards of his time. The priest Bartolomé de las Casas, who edited Columbus's in-flight magazine and was a lifelong opponent of Spanish colonists' atrocities against the natives, wrote, I saw with my own eyes how the Spaniards cut off the noses and ears of Indians, men and women, without provocation simply because they enjoyed doing it. Likewise, I have seen them invite local rulers, ostensibly to ensure their safety, and when they came peacefully, they were taken prisoners and burned. So the arrival of Christopher Columbus in the New World was not favorable for the natives. They lived peacefully and quietly only until 1492. When Columbus and his crew arrived in the Bahamas, they encountered the natives, the Arawaks. This encounter is described in Columbus' own diary. They have no weapons, and they are not familiar with them, for when I showed them the swords, they grasped their blades and cut themselves. They have no iron, they have no darts, but only sticks, some with fish bones or other objects on the ends of the sticks. It seems to me that these people are shrewd and would make good servants, and I believe that they would readily become Christians, since they seem to have no religion. As an independent entrepreneur, Christopher Columbus immediately appreciated the economic potential of the territory he discovered. The moment when the explorer's boldness overshadowed his greed is reflected in several letters Columbus sent to the king and queen of Spain. In one of these letters he told the monarchs that no matter how much gold was needed, and no matter how many slaves you asked for, I could provide it all. From some of the Arawaks Columbus saw pieces of gold. Finding out where it came from did not work out, so the navigator forced six natives to become his guides, directing the ships to Cuba and Haiti. There the travelers discovered gold, but not as much as expected. Nevertheless, Columbus reported to the queen that many spices grew there and that there were mines filled with gold and other metals. Thanks to this report, Columbus received funding for a second trip, this time with 13 ships and 1,200 men. Although he could not fill the ships with gold, Columbus filled them with another currency slaves. In 1495, Columbus returned to the New World and immediately captured 1,500 of the Arawak population. 500 of them were sent to Spain, about 200 died during the trip. This was the first transatlantic slave trade. The remaining 1,000 slaves were obliged to search for gold. According to the American historian Howard Zinn, all persons over the age of 14 were forced to find and bring a certain amount of gold to the Spaniard. Whoever failed to meet the quota would have his arm cut off. The way Christopher Columbus and his men treated the women and children of the Arawaks was nothing short of atrocious. To reward his lieutenants, Columbus allowed them to rape women. And because he never forgot money, the navigator sold women to human traffickers as well. Columbus's barbaric actions reached the ears of the Spanish monarchs. Concerned by this, the monarchs appointed Francisco de Bobadilla, brother of Queen Isabella's childhood friend, as second governor of the lands discovered by Christopher Columbus, and authorized de Bobadilla to inspect the discoverer's deeds. Even in modern times, a report by Bobadilla has been discovered in Spanish archives that mentions Columbus's atrocities against the natives. For example, the report records that a woman who spoke ill of the family of Christopher Columbus was stripped naked, put on a donkey, and driven around in a densely populated area. Bartolomeo, Columbus's brother, then cut off her tongue, 
and Christopher congratulated him on his worthy protection of the family. Dozens of such actions prompted Francisco de Bobadilla to remove Columbus from power. He was sent back to Spain as a prisoner. However, after Columbus's expulsion, the Spaniards continued the violence and sale of people into slavery, nearly wiping out the natives. There are many historical accounts that show one thing Christopher Columbus was radically changed, becoming a horrible man when he set foot in the New World. Those who remembered him before the voyage did not know Columbus like that. Of course, no one is perfect, and no one can challenge Columbus's ability and courage. But history must also not forget that this man, driven by a desire to enrich himself, was the one who started the disaster in the New World.